I played every Dragon Ball Z Budokai game. Here's my thoughts. Part 2. Before I start, make sure you check out Part 1, which should pop up in the corner right here. In that part, I covered Budokai, Budokai 2, and Budokai 3. While there were only three games just called Budokai, there were actually five more games in the series, and they're all from the same developer. This video is going to cover the remaining five games in the series. I just want to say before we start, you are all the best, and I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but I am absolutely blown away by your support. If you're new here and you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing and liking this video because there's a lot more of this kind of stuff on the way. Anyways, time for the video. But first, a word from this video's sponsor. Hey, check it out. There's this game that you may or may not have heard of. Who am I kidding? You've heard of it because it's taken the world by storm. Raid Shadow Legends is the hit mobile game with over 600 champions. That's right, over 600 champions. That's a crazy number of party combinations. And what's super cool is that all of the champions are part of unique factions with their own history in the world of Tele Area. Use my links below to download Raid Shadow Legends onto your phone or PC. Raid's newest boss is its most insane boss yet. The Hydra has six different heads, and each head is its own boss. The Head of Wrath is all about anger. It weakens your whole team, but once you're really in the fight, you've got another thing coming. Hitting the Head of Wrath 15 times gives it the Vengeance buff, tripling its attack power until the end of its next turn. Your best bet to take this one out is dealing as much damage as you can in as few hits as possible. My favorite one, though, is the Head of Mischief. Got your champion buffed up? Too bad. The Head of Mischief steals them and gives them to the other Hydra heads. Wanna hit it? Good luck. It can redirect attacks to the other heads. This one's tough, and I really like a challenge. Honestly, I really like the visuals in this game. The characters are super detailed, and the stages look super realistic. I also really like the gameplay loop. It's like a classic RPG with a modern twist, and the party compositions are pretty much endless. Oh, and the story has tons of voiced cutscenes, which, if you know me, you know I love voiced cutscenes. The new stuff in Raid is pretty cool, too. They're giving giving away a super limited edition champion to every player. Esports legend Simples Champion is available to new and old players alike. Just log in for 7 days between now and January 28th to grab this awesome champion. Make sure you get in now though because once the event's over you can't get him again. For real, there's never been a better time to get started. And if you use my link in the description or scan my QR code, you'll get the Epic Champion Tayrell, 200,000 silver, an energy refill, an XP boost, and an ancient shard so you can summon some really awesome champions as soon as you start. You can grab all of this treasure from right here when you're in the game. Once you've joined, find me under the name Neosai, and if you're fast enough, you can join my clan. It's super easy. Click the link in the description, and I'll see you in Raid Shadow Legends. Dragon Ball Z Shin Budokai released on the PlayStation Portable in 2006. The gameplay in Shin Budokai is probably the biggest departure from the normal Budokai formula so far. A lot is similar, but a lot has changed. For starters, the movement just feels significantly faster. Combos seem longer too. Here's just a general list of things that I noticed immediately that felt different. The capsule system is totally gone. Your moves are now built into your character. The dedicated kick button is now replaced by a heavy attack. You can now charge both keyboard blasts and energy attacks to increase their strength, or you can just tap the button to get them out faster but with less power. When you're knocked backwards, you can get back up in one fluid movement. Oh, and the dragon rushes are completely gone. There's a new dash move called Aura Burst that uses up a bunch of your key, but it allows you to quickly move around the stage. Its real usage, though, allows you to link it into an attack that stuns your opponent for a couple of seconds. It's kind of tricky to pull off at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's a neat little mechanic. The number of characters in this game are reduced overall from previous games, but they're still a healthy the amount, especially if you include the transformations. The transformations can be activated in battles, but they can also be chosen directly from the character select menu. The modes in Shin Budokai are Dragon Road, Arcade, Z Trial, Network Battle, Training, and Profile Card. Dragon Road is the story mode in this one, and it's based off the Dragon Ball Z movie Fusion Reborn. That means that this time around, we're not retreading the normal Dragon Ball Z story. New material, baby! The story is broken into a linear path where you can play it chapter by chapter. It's very straightforward, no gimmicks, no game boards, no over world, just chapters and menus. But honestly, for a PSP game, this is fine. You also don't get to pick any specific characters this time around. Instead, you play as different characters depending on the story chapter you're on. This is the first Budokai game to have a straight up arcade mode. There are also plenty of difficulties in the arcade mode ranging from very easy to Z. Z is above very hard, so I assume it's even harder than that. There's 10 fights, with some having a little bit of dialogue at the beginning. At the end, your character summons Shenron, and there's a little scripted dialogue that plays before the credits roll. Z Trial mode is a new mode where you can play survival or time attack. In survival, you fight an endless wave of enemies until you lose. In time attack, you have to defeat as many enemies in a specific course as fast as you can. These modes aren't really anything crazy, but 
but they're still nice to have. Network battle is the multiplayer component. You can do online battles with people nearby and share your profile card with them. Profile card has a few things you can do in it. To explain, your profile card is your identity card that other players can see if you connect to the local multiplayer. You can customize it however you want though with the options given. There's a shop where you can buy new elements to customize it and editing the card is pretty straightforward. You place your acquired stamps on the card and customize it however you like. You're able to rotate and change the opacity of the stamps too so you have a pretty big level of customization. Also inside of the profile card menu is player stats, including those of people you fought online if you fought someone online. By the way, this game also brought back the little interactive loading screen. This one has the logo move in whatever direction you press as if you punched it. Shin Budokai is an interesting game. On its own, it's a decent game with some pretty good replay value. I would say it is a step down from Budokai 3, but also it's a PSP game. This was a time before handheld gaming consoles were playing full console experiences. Overall, Shin Budokai is a pretty good game, and if you're a hardcore fan or someone looking to experience the Fusion Reborn story in a different way for some reason, Shin Budokai is definitely worth a shot. Dragon Ball Z Shin Budokai Another Road is the sequel to Shin Budokai and was released on the PSP in 2007. The story mode in Another Road is entirely new material, not based on any previous Dragon Ball story to my knowledge. It is, however, set after Fusion Reborn. At least it seems like it is because there's references to Fusion Reborn. At first, it's presented similarly to the first Shin Budokai, but quickly opens up into a Budokai 3 style overworld. However, this time, you can't really explore a whole lot. Instead, the gameplay revolves around trying to protect your cities as the opponents destroy them. Enemies are scattered everywhere and they'll constantly attack the cities, but your character getting near the cities heals them. When you confront the attacker, you're able to get into a fight with them. Sometimes you have to fight them more than once though, which can get pretty repetitive. This is because of the life mechanic where each character has a certain number of sensu beans. When someone is defeated in battle, be it you or the opponent, you lose a sensu bean. If you run out, you retreat from the map. If they run out, they retreat from the map. Further into the story, you get allies in the overworld who also have sensu beans and you can share your with them so they don't have to retreat. The gameplay in the story isn't really anything groundbreaking, but it's definitely more interactive than the first Shin Budokai's linear story. Being able to fly around and protect the cities is way more engaging than just choosing your next fight, since there's an actual lose condition outside of who punched better. And by the way, can I just say, I love the way the overworld looks. I know it's probably a technical limitation, but it looks so much like a PS1 game with blocky character models. I know it's kind of a weird thing to praise, but I just love that kind of style. Another nice touch in the story mode is that that this game has significantly more voice acting than the first. In fact, the first had barely any voice acting at all. I didn't realize how much I missed it until I started playing Another Road, even with the bare bones dialogue cutscenes. Another Road's story mode has a new mechanic called boosters. You equip these boosters to your characters in order to increase their stats. They work kind of like the item capsules from the PS2 games, but they're more like just general stat increases rather than situational boosts. Normal boosters just increase certain stats like HP and special attack. The ultimate boosters increase your ultimate attack power. You can get more of these boosters by winning the fights and finishing story missions. The story mode here also has some branching paths depending on your choices in each mission. I think this gives the game way more replay value and gives you a reason to not just do the story one time. The story mode overall is better than Shin Budokai's. They cover different stories which is nice, but the presentation here is just significantly better overall. If I had to choose one or the other, I'd probably choose this one. Arcade mode is pretty much identical to the first Shin Budokai's. You choose your character and the difficulty, and then you fight 10 battles. This time though, it's set in the world tournament and when you win, the announcer interviews you. Z Trials is back and it includes the survival and time attack mode along with a new mode called challenge mode. Challenge mode requires you to perform certain actions or moves in the battle in order to complete the challenge. I like this mode because it allows you to practice specific mechanics and it's gamified so you're not just mindlessly doing these against a training dummy. Network battles and card collection both return but as you probably guessed are both identical to the first Shin Budokai. Oh and for the record, something this game does as you know by now that I love is the character specific dialogue. That kind of thing is just my favorite because it gets you just a little bit more immersed in the game. Oh, and before I forget to mention it, the loading screen minigame from the first Shin Budokai is back. Another Road is overall an improvement to the first Shin Budokai, but only a slight one. The story mode is clearly better and everything else is pretty much the same. I would have to recommend playing this one just for the story, but either one is good if you just want some mashy Dragon Ball Z fun on the go. 
Dragon Ball Z Burst Limit was released for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in 2008. Burst Limit feels like a mixture of the Budokai games and the Shin Budokai games. Control wise, it feels like Shin Budokai. Speed wise, it feels like Budokai. That's the best way I can explain it. Right off the bat, I've gotta say that this game's menus are clean. Super visually pleasing. The visuals of the gameplay itself is kind of a mixed bag. The game has the iconic cell shading and that part looks as good as ever. The character models are also highly detailed and look super nice. They even have little deformations where, for example, if someone punches hard enough, you can see the indention of the fist come out of the victim's back. The problem is, the developers of this game decided to put some kind of blur filter over the gameplay. Everything looks like there's a layer of Vaseline on it, and I don't know why they would do this. It detracts from an otherwise decent looking game, and honestly, I like the visual style outside of this one creative decision. This game probably has the smallest starting roster of characters I've seen in any of the games so far. In fact, the starting roster burst limit I think is smaller than that of the original Budokai. I have no idea why this is. It could have to do with the fact that burst limit only covers up to the Cell Saga, but even then, I can't imagine why only three characters are available to begin with. Anyways, on to the gameplay. This game plays closer to the PSP games than it does to the PS2 Budokai games. You have your regular punches, a strong attack, and your special moves. Key is automatically refilled here rather than using a variable gauge like the previous games. The biggest change is probably the fatigue meter and the partner system. The fatigue meter is kind of like Budokai 3's, but you can actually see it this time. It goes up as you perform actions and battles, and if it fills up completely, your character becomes completely unresponsive. You can gain control of the character a little faster if you mash buttons, but it still allows your opponent to get in some pretty easy hits. The partner system allows you to choose one of your unlocked characters as a partner. If you fulfill certain conditions in battle, the partner will show up and you'll get a small cutscene with them during the fight. It's really cool and the game does a lot with this system, but I'll get into that when I talk about the story mode. One other thing I need to point out about the gameplay. This game lets you unlock skills for all the characters solely by playing the story mode. That means that if you want, for example, the Super Saiyan transformations in the versus mode, you've gotta unlock them in the story mode. This is kind of a bummer, but it's fine for me because the story mode in this game is fantastic. The modes in Burst Limit are Z Chronicles, which is the story mode, versus Trial, Tutorial, and Training. The modes in these games, as you've probably noticed by now, are about the same almost every time. As I said earlier, Z Chronicles is the story mode. It covers everything up to the Cell Saga, just like the original Budokai. Another thing that's just like the original Budokai is the way the story is presented. There's full cutscenes and dialogue instead of just text boxes, which is something I really love seeing make a comeback. When you choose the story chapter you want to play, you can pick from a range of difficulties from very easy to normal, with higher difficulties unlockable later. Almost every chapter starts with a cutscene followed by a battle. What's cool about these battles though is that they're sometimes broken up by cutscenes too, but it's not always just scripted scenes that happen at certain HP levels, your actions in the battles actually affect what scenes you get. That means that sometimes you might not see every scene, or you might see a different scene every time you replay the battle. It makes you feel way more immersed in the cool moments, and I really enjoy it. Honestly, this might be my favorite thing about Burst Limit. Finishing story missions, as you probably guessed, unlocks more missions. Also, some of the missions are played from the villain's perspective, which is really refreshing. At the end of every mission, you get to see a list of every possible scene and which ones you unlocked inside the battle. I need to talk about the actual regular cutscenes in this game though. The production value on these scenes is sublime. The action is palpable and sometimes I forgot that I wasn't watching a TV show at points, even if it was just for a moment. The really important cutscenes clearly had so much effort put into them, it's insane. Check this out. I'll tear you apart. Just like that earth. <laughs> just like that earthling? That earthling's name. Just chills, man. Versus mode in this game is straightforward, as you probably guessed. You can choose to play versus another player, the CPU, or have the CPU fight another CPU. Nothing too crazy. Something I do like, though, is how when you start battles outside of the story mode, you get a little intro cutscene before the fight starts. This game really leaned into the cinematic angle, and I love it. Trial mode is a series of three modes that you can choose from, kind of like previous games. The first is survival. You play an endless series of fights until you lose. Playing survival unlocks the next mode, called time attack. In time attack, you win the fights as fast as you can, and the game requires 
records your time. The final mode is called Battle Point Mode. In this mode, you fight a themed series of enemies. The modes in this game are a bit lackluster, but trust me when I say the story completely makes up for it. Oh, and by the way, the little loading screen game in Burst Limit just lets you control these Dragon Balls and which way they roll around. I really like Burst Limit. It's very simple and doesn't have a lot to it, but the presentation is just so fantastic, and especially the cutscenes. The gameplay doesn't really do anything too new from previous Budokai games, but it really doesn't have to. My main complaint is still probably the weird blur filter they put on this game, but I stopped noticing it after a while. I really wish they'd make a follow-up to this someday with the exact kind of scenes that you see in it, but covering later story arcs, but I won't hold my breath. Dragon Ball Z Infinite World released for the PlayStation 2 in 2008. I'm just gonna go ahead and say this game's look is incredibly similar to Budokai 3's. I assume they just built this off of Budokai 3 to save on development time, which is fine. Visually, this game retains the iconic style of cell shading from the other recent games. It looks as good as ever, and there's really not a whole lot I can say about it outside of being thankful I don't have to look at the burst limit Vaseline filter anymore. As far as gameplay goes, this one goes back to the pre-Shin Budokai style for the most part. You have your punches, your special moves, and all that jazz, but the heavy attack is gone in favor of the old school kicks again. It does look like some of the characters' combos were updated though, which is nice. Unfortunately, the cool beam struggles are gone, along with every other kind of struggle move. The fatigue meter is back, but this time it's actually visible below your health bar, and works pretty similarly to burst limits, at least visually. One thing this game does take from Shin Budokai though, is the aura burst. The story and characters in this game cover through the Buu Saga, along with a healthy selection of Dragon Ball GT content. The modes in Infinite World are Dragon Mission, which is the story mode, Dragon Duel, Warrior's Training, Warrior's Room, which is the skill editor and skill shop, and Fighter's Road. As I said, Dragon Mission is the story mode. Something immediately noticeable is that this game actually has pre-rendered cutscenes. The story isn't just told through text bubbles this time, which is really nice. Though, to be honest, coming directly off of Burst Limit, the bar for cutscenes is really high for me. Also, there's a lot more to the story mode than I expected. So you begin on this game board kind of thing, with a bunch of locations you can unlock and visit over time. These locations are essentially the chapters, and you run to them to begin the next event, but not every event is a fight. Sometimes you have these third-person exploration platforming sections, sometimes they have checkpoints you have to cross within a certain period of time to complete them, but there's also collectibles scattered everywhere, and it turns into kind of a fun time challenge. Other times, the objective is completely different, plus it gave them an excuse to make an actual playable snake way. The fights, as you'd expect, are pretty straightforward most of the time, but sometimes there's what I'd call tutorial fights with special conditions, like landing a certain number of hits within the time limit. I really do like how they try to shake up the story here though. The extra interactivity makes it easier to swallow playing the same story yet again. I mentioned this earlier, but the story covers up to the Buu Saga, but goes even further and has content from GT. There's also a little bit of extra stuff like fights with Broly and Janemba. It's also a really nice change to get actual cutscenes for the GT content, and I really enjoy that kind of stuff. If you're playing these games just for the story, Infinite World is definitely the way to go. Dragon Duel is the standard versus mode. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. There's player versus player, player versus CPU, and CPU versus the CPU. Warrior's Room is the capsule editor. It works pretty much identically to the previous Budokai games. The capsule shop is also there, and it's themed like Bobbity's spaceship. There's an extra unlockable mode called Fighter's Road. You choose a character, and you're able to choose a difficulty ranging from very easy to Z, which is the hardest difficulty. You run around as Goku, like in the story mode, and you're able to choose the battles you want to fight on the game board. Completing battles earns you Zenny, and when you're through playing, you can exit, and the game tallies your total earned Zenny. Honestly, though, this mode is pretty hard, even on very easy difficulty. I had to stack my character with with some pretty strong skills and items to even stand a chance. It's not a bad mode though. I definitely like it better than Budokai 3's Dragon Arena. Oh, and the loading screen minigame here is you mashing buttons to make Goku climb Korin's tower, but if you get too high, Korin swats you down. Infinite World is a noted improvement in the story area, but otherwise feels really similar to Budokai 3 in most ways. I mean, there's definitely some refined gameplay and a change to some of the systems, but overall it feels kind of like a lateral move. It came out the same year as Burst Limit, so I imagine maybe this was released as a final hurrah to the PS2. Alright, there were no more Budokai games. See you later, bye! Well, okay. I guess we can talk about it. Dragon Ball Evolution is a movie that actually exists. They made a video game tie-in. I'm so sorry. Let's talk about it. Dragon Ball Evolution, the game, was released in 2009 for the PlayStation Portable. It's made by the same developers of all the other Budokai games and pretty clearly was repurposed from Shin Budokai. That being said, would you believe that this game actually isn't bad? This game plays very similarly to the Shin Budokai games, albeit with a couple of major differences. First, the Key Blast button is now a special attack button. Second, there's no aerial combat 
that in this game whatsoever. Anytime you launch an enemy, they fall directly back to the ground. Every character still has an ultimate move, though it's a bit weird that Goku's ultimate move is the Kamehameha, especially coming off so many previous Dragon Ball games, but I get it. Really, this game just feels like a distilled, simpler version of Shin Budokai. It's not bad at all, and for me, it's really charming in its own weird way. Every character has a distinct moveset from their anime counterparts, though all the moves have generic names, unfortunately. I assume they didn't want to commit to naming any of the skills in this game because they either didn't have the permission from the movie studio, or they just didn't know what to call them. A majority of the moves are physical contact moves, but there are some kinda sorta key moves. For the most part, the key moves feel more like Jedi Force powers than traditional key moves, but I think that's just the movie aesthetic that they were going for. Really though, a lot of these moves are incredibly imaginative, and it's weirdly a nice departure from the previous games. Visually, they went for a quote-unquote realistic aesthetic, and it doesn't really look that bad. The stages are a bit basic, but they do the job. I do prefer the cell shaded style, of course, but I get why they went with this. I still think it could have used the outlines from the previous games, but it's not ugly or anything. The modes in Dragon Ball Evolution are Story Mode, Arcade Mode, Network Battle, Mission Mode, Gallery, and Survival. Unfortunately, this game is missing a straight-up dual mode, but I guess you can consider the online play the dual mode. Story Mode is, well, Story Mode. I'm gonna be honest, I think I've repressed this movie from my memory, but it seems like the story loosely follows the movie's plot. The presentation is pretty much identical to Shin Budokai with lots of static text as the dialogue. Unfortunately, there's no voice acting, though. There's also a lot of dialogue in this game. Speaking of voice acting, I guess they didn't actually get the cast for the movie to voice the characters in this game, so Goku is very obviously voiced by Yuri Lowenthal because all I hear is Sasuke from Naruto when I play as him, so that's fun. Something I didn't expect from this game was some actual cutscenes. They're not complicated or anything, but I truly was not expecting any kind of cutscenes at all. For the most part though, there's just tons of dialogue and moving character pictures on the screen. Of course, once you've gone through enough dialogue, you finally get to fight enemies. The gameplay here really isn't bad. It's no worse than Shin Budokai's, so it's at minimum a decent game. Its source material is just, uh, questionable. Anyways, a fun little thing they do at the end of the story is having Goku fight Chi Chi during the end credits, which I think is a really neat touch. Arcade mode is, as always, straightforward. Except also not. The difficulties in arcade mode range from very easy to dragon difficulty, which seems to replace the Z difficulty in previous games. Something I do like about arcade mode is that it's super arcadey with its character intros. When you begin arcade mode, you get a backstory to the character you're using. While I don't really care very much about Dragon Ball Evolution's canon, I do think it's a neat touch that they did this. Plus, every fight has dialogue beforehand, so the arcade mode is basically just a second story mode. I really like that and I think it adds a cool touch of charm to a game that people might just write off at first glance. Once you beat all the fights, there's a little ending dialogue thing and then it does the same thing as the story mode and lets you fight while the credits roll. Mission mode is a mode where you can take on certain challenges with specific clear conditions. Challenge mode in Evolution is actually exactly the same as the challenge mode in Shin Budokai Another Road. In fact, it looks like a lot of the challenges are identical, even with the same wording. That being said, I'm still glad they're here because they're a fun alternate way to practice the game's mechanics. Gallery mode is what it sounds like. There's a lot of cool stuff in here though. Say what you want about how Dragon Ball Evolution turned out. Some of these designs are sick. A lot of the stuff in here looks like it's production materials from the actual movie, which is really awesome and a neat behind the scenes bonus for people who decided to buy this game. Survival mode is as straightforward as previous ones we've seen. You find an endless slew of enemies that increase in difficulty until you're defeated. And really, that's it for Dragon Ball Evolution. I went into this game fully expecting not to like it. Heck, I was kind of wanting not to like it. After I played it for a bit though, I realized that it's simply a good game with not so good source material. Honestly, if you really like the gameplay of the Shin Budokai games and you were for some reason on the fence about this game, it legitimately is worth a shot. Even if you just want to get it to laugh at it, I guarantee you'll at least have a little bit of a good time with it. And here we are. That's the entire Dragon Ball Z Budokai series. It was a long journey, but we made it. I think these games as a whole are fantastic, and while there's now tons of newer, flashier Dragon Ball games, these are still worth a look at. I know there was a Dragon Ball Z Budokai HD collection, but it only included Budokai and Budokai 3. Clearly, there's a rich history of Budokai games, even if they weren't necessarily called Budokai. Out of all the games on this list, I'd have to say that my favorite is a toss-up between Budokai and Burst Limit, shockingly. I did not remember Burst 
limit being as good as it was, but it truly blew me away. Thank you so much for watching. I can't believe how much support I've gotten lately. I love it and I love making these videos and I can't wait for you all to see what I've got cooking for the next one. If you like this stuff, make sure to subscribe to my channel and definitely like the videos if you do enjoy them. It helps me out a lot and I think YouTube's magic algorithm will show more and more people this stuff. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and have a fantastic day.